Coming up on this retrospective edition of Outlook TV. Prance on the pier with the unstoppable Connie Smudge. BC Culture Days with the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. A trip to the Twisted Element Bar in Calgary. And much, much more. Hello and welcome to Outlook TV. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And I'm Robert Mackay. And you're watching the Queer Magazine new show that brings you the stories that matter the most from coast to coast. Welcome to part two of our retrospective. We're Ooh. looking back at all of the shows that we really, really, really loved from last year. <laughs> and we're going to start out by prancing on the pier. Ooh, and the unstoppable Connie Smudge has this one. Hi kittens, here I have arrived. Thanks team! I've arrived via boat, via yacht, via... Oh. Pride. I am here for Pride, my darlings. It's Prance on the Pier here in North Vancouver. I am down at the Kate's Court, and we're down at the shipyards, and there's beautiful people. I want to show you everybody, but oh my gosh, my darlings, look at the city. Let's go check it out. Come on, let's go check out North Vancouver, Prance on the Pier. Notice emotions to have the city uh, fly the pride flag. I asked all other uh, public bodies or uh, civic bodies to do it, so we all flew the, the pride flag. Your one favorite thing that is like North Vancouver? Uh, well, for the city, it's really for us, it's about creating public spaces for people to be able, of all ages and all demographics, to come together and socialize. <laughs> This is such a thrill for me to be able to be down here and see all of these amazing people coming together. It's such a com it's so wonderful to see North Vancouver commit to the idea that love is love and it really demonstrates that we are getting way more progressive out here. We are ready for change. We're ready for for some some good things to happen. But I'm uh, hoping that uh the gay and lesbian community continue their fight to make sure that they have equal rights uh, like everyone else in this country. Have you got on the roster tonight? Tell me. Well, we have Sienna Blaze who's emceeing and she's going to be doing a number very shortly. We have Misty Meadows all the way from Calgary, kind of a new, new gig here in Vancouver, which we're super excited about. We have Made in China who's out there, is phenomenal. And of course, we have Connie, Connie Smudge. Pride Worldwide to me is honestly just living in your truth and being able to be who you are. And that's the most important thing we can teach each other is like, we can all be different, but we're all the same. We're one human race. So let's act like it and let's have a good time. Happy Pride, North Vancouver! Well, my kittens, right down here in North Vancouver, at the sea bus terminal, at the shipyards, North Van, my people, 2017. Oh my gosh, who can turn the world on with a smile? That would be Vancouver Pride, bringing their joy and their understanding and their diversity right to my city. Ladies and gentlemen, I still am your intrepid reporter, the unstoppable Connie Smudge, reporting for Outlook TV right here from my home city, North Vancouver. Ah, oh, yeah. Well, let's head back over to Calgary with sister Visa Decline, who has all the down and dirty at the Element Nightclub. Twisted Element. Mm. Ooh. Twisted Element opened its doors in November of, tw November of 2004. Um, so we've been around for 13 years now, and we've been a, always been a LGBT community club. Um, currently, we're one of three LGBTQ bars in the city. Um, and yeah, so we're just a dance club four nights a week. For regular programming, I think we're pretty dance and drag focused. We do uh, drag shows Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. And then, so we always do them earlier in the night, so they usually finish up around 10.30. And then we have a massive dance floor upstairs, so we have DJs spinning all night on the, the dance floor upstairs. And then the lounge tends to be kind of more of a, a chill lounge where you go and get away and shoot some pool and, you know, be more social than the upstairs. On Wednesday night in our lounge, we do karaoke. So we have an amazing Carla Brown karaoke host, and she's one of the best hosts in the city. So we have a great karaoke crowd for that. And then on Thursdays, because it's more of a chill night as well, upstairs on the, on the main stage, we have Amateur Strip. 
So it's just a chance for boys and girls or whoever wants to get involved to come down and, and you know, compete in the amateur strip and win some cash and just do something different on a Thursday night. <laughs> I'm a huge drag race fan. I'm a huge fan of these girls. So I kind of took this as an opportunity to just uh, kind of, instead of me having to go to the Queens, I can start bringing the Queens to me. So we've done some, our first one that we ever brought in was Bianca Del Rio, who of course is the most famous one probably in the world next to RuPaul. Um, but other than that, we've had um, Willem and, and countless other ones, Juju B. We've also had Lady Bunny, who's not on the show, but is also a huge drag entertainer. Um, during season seven, I had the top four queens all come up here and perform and do viewing parties and watch the show with us. So we brought up a lot of a lot of queens, and it's just a lot of fun for our customers and a lot of fun for me. Make sure you go to our website, twistedelement.ca, like us on Facebook, comment, post your pictures, and let us know how you feel about the new Twisted Element. Originally it was owned by two gentlemen, and now after basically 13 years, they've got a chance to, to move on and retire and enjoy some new things. So the new ownership took over, and I was lucky enough that they chose me to stay on and, and run the club for them. Um, so going forward, I think a lot of it in this first few months has kind of just been feeling out and becoming, you know, kind of rebranding and seeing who we are and who we really want to be moving forward. And now that that's happened, I think we've started working more within community groups and been more active in the parade. We were a member, or we were marching in the parade for the first time in 10 years this year. Um, and all that's been a lot of fun to, to interact with the court and stuff like that. So now that we've kind of spent a lot of time doing that, I think we'll probably, they look at doing some renovations and maybe going back to some food services and maybe open earlier in the day and just kind of just kind of change things up and see what the, the community needs and kind of direct our vision to kind of what the community needs and what they're looking for. Reporting for Outlook TV in Calgary, Alberta, I'm Sister Visa Decline. We're going to have to take a little break now. I have to fill our time machine with new fuel. Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. Coming up, or is it going back? Oh, going back, I think. <laughs> We've got BC Culture Days. Ooh, we're going to check out the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence in their manifestation. We're here to meet the Vancouver Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. They're part of BC Culture Days events, and today we're going to get to know them a little bit more and find out why they're sisters, what the sisters' mission is, and what their calling is. So let's get up close and personal with the Vancouver Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. Back in 2010, when I um, was walking on the streets of Davie Street, I saw the sisters for the first time. And something, a leap of joy happened in my heart. But what really got me into being a sister was once I understood the spirit of the sisterhood that was a worldwide communion. And that came out of the gay community, the LGBT community. So I said, my goodness, what can be more significant for me than to be a witness of joy in a world where, which is so desperate for it? I was standing with Sister Petunia and some of the other sisters, and I said, my God, I'm actually having fun doing this. I could do it. And so I thought about it, and um, the words kept going through my mind. I like people to like people, to like one another, to accept diversity. That's where I got my name from. The more diversity I can accept, the more diversity other people can accept. I decided on my 70th birthday, I was going to give myself a birthday gift. I was going to pledge to become a nun. And I did. And here I am today. I am a nun, fully professed, love serving my sisters, love being part of an organization that makes such a difference for so many people. And that's why I became a nun. I was called. Why I joined the sisters was I was always joining community groups and doing a lot of volunteer work looking for my place. And all of them it just felt, you know, I'd be in a lot of groups that were um, no gay, queer people at all. Or if they were, they were, you know, very separated. I find with the sisters were 
all of the community. We're not just gay or lesbian or queer, we're everyone. And so I felt like when I found the sisters, I found my place. And I didn't join right away because I thought it was just gay Wait. men. Yeah, I thought it was just male identified. And then when I found out I could be a big old queerdo with you guys, <laughs> then I joined up. <laughs> Relatively new to the area, I hadn't actually heard of you folks before. So this has been really eye opening. Um, and it's, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited actually to, to be along and to have seen the, the transformation into the outfits, but also just to learn about kind of your, your culture, if you will. We, we are, are the Sisters of Perpetual, Perpetual Indulgence, and, and you're watching, watching Outlook TV. TV. Let's head back to Ottawa. For Queer Lou. Ooh, sounds like fun. Hi, welcome to the nation's capital. My name is Horizon. Winterlude is in its final weekend here in the nation's capital. And, well, Queerlude was supposed to be a part of it, but things happen and, well, I didn't get to skate. So I brought my eight-foot pride flag and, well, I hope I don't get in trouble, but I'm just going to go on the ice and skate all by my little self. I hope you enjoy our little tour of Winterlude's final weekend. on the skating rink of dreams at City Hall. What you have now, kittens? Hi everyone, we're here in the nation's capital, Ottawa, and it happens to be Queer Lude as well as Winter Lude, but we're lucky enough to have the organizer of Queer Lude here, Andre Pro. So tell us about Queer Lude. Uh, so Queer Lude uh, came about where a couple of years ago, uh, I was a figure skater for many, many years and I have a thousand dollar pair of figure skates and said, why put them to waste? So I posted a little event on Facebook and asked if anybody wanted to come and skate with me and 20 people showed up for the first year. Uh, so then I tried again uh, last year to try and get it bigger with a bowling night on the Friday night, another skate on the canal and then finished it off with a big huge cabatinade dance party at the lookout. So can you tell us what Black Swan Events has planned for the next Queer Lude? Uh, well, after this year, I'm still debating if I should. I mean, I, I put four months worth of time and effort into Queer Lude, and I just don't know if this city is, is wanting it. Did you guys have fun? Yeah. You did? Yeah. And what was your favorite thing at Winterlude this year? Um, getting the beaver tails and skating on the canal. Beaver tails is the best. What do you guys have to say about Winterlude? Nothing, really? We've got one tiny little Canadian that has something to say. Where are you from? Uh, Massachusetts. Okay, so he's not Canadian. <laughs> does, not Canadian. Does your president know you're here? Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's no politics here in Canada. We love everybody. Feel the flame forever burn. Teaching lessons we must learn. Okay, 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 I'll stick to lip syncing for now. This is the flame that was built for Canada's 150th celebration here in the nation's capital. It's been relit specifically for Winterlude, and today it gets extinguished. Right in front of City Hall at the Marion Duard Centre, this is where the flame has been living for a little while. It's sad to see it die down today, but Queerlude would have had its own flame. And next year, I'm going to go bigger, better than ever before. Support? No support. I'm still going to do it because, well, I can. I think it's time now to take the queers bowling. Ten pin bowling? Ten pin bowling. Let it loose. Hey, Rebecca. Hey, Robert. I'm going to play a sport tonight that requires me to stick my fingers into holes and toss that trick down the alley. Today, we're bowling with the English Bay Bowling League at Revs on Lohi. Today is the first night of the LGBTQ Bowling League called the English Bay Bowling Association or Bowling League. And we're really excited because we've been doing this for 35 years in Vancouver. And it's just a fun way to meet people and to have a little bit of exercise and to just get out and 
do something nice on a Sunday evening. Anybody over the age of 19 is welcome here, and it doesn't. It can be LGBTQ and friends and family as well. <laughs> my fifth or fourth year if I'm not mistaken and uh, every year I enjoyed it made a lot of friends uh, new friends every year so yeah and I'm improving my skills I guess and then uh, we're supporting you know uh, the LGBT community and then uh, we've encouraged a lot of people to join our league and then we keep uh, seeing a lot of new faces every year so that that means I think we're doing a good job on promoting our league uh, who's the best bowler on your team Daisy that's all I'll say. If she, if she, if I've, I think I've seen her in 11 years. I think I've seen her make two games under 100, and her average is about 160. This is my 26th season. I joined this league in 1992, and I'm bowling ever since. And how important is this league to you? Very, very important. I have more friends here than I have on, on my job, so it's a good thing. This is the one league you can bowl. You don't have to be good at it, you just have to have fun doing it. That's it. What would you say to you uh, young viewers? Come on out and join our soiree. You'll have a hell of a heck of a good time. Those young viewers out there, if you wanted to join our league, it's a fun league. Commodities are nice, lots of uh, great people, and then I'm pretty sure you're going to have fun. Anybody out there who has a couple of hours to spare, whether it's Monday or Sunday, there is a bowling league going on every evening, every day. And if you join the English Bay League, then you're going to have the most fun of all the leagues. Hey, that was a lot of fun. Once again, I'm Emily Ann Fraser, and this was the English Bay Bowling League. You're watching Outlook TV. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go register. Thanks. We're going to have to take another little break now. Yep. I've gone too far back in time. I'm officially in the 80s. The 80s were awesome. They were. Welcome back. You're watching Outlook TV. Up next, Gary had a chance to get a little literary with author Danny Ramadan. We're at the Emerald Room in Vancouver for the launch of Danny Ramadan's debut novel, The Clothesline Swing. Let's go in and see what it's all about. The kiss I stole from you in the back of a dark cab roaming Damascus while the driver was cursing at checkpoints and wars. My debut novel, The Clothesline Swing, is a book that I have been working on for the past five, six years now. It came, as a, it came to me as a short story that I thought about when I was in Egypt, actually, about three characters put together in a very uh, strange situation. Uh, it's about two lovers. One of them is uh, passing away and the other is trying to keep him alive by telling him stories after stories to keep him alive. And death is standing there waiting for the moment to take the soul of the lover who's dying. That image just took in my mind, just stayed with me for years really. It's a short story that kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger until one day I was like, I need to tell that story in a better way. So I told that story, but I in added to it the experience of being a Syrian refugee. Because coming here to Canada as a queer Syrian refugee, it was a difficult, challenging experience that I think the way that I tried to present it is to write this novel. She was raised believing that curiosity is not a good trait for a girl. And she did not care to break that rule. I believe that Syria is a nation of storytellers. We are all people who come together and share their stories one uh, to one another. There is a lot of people who sit there and when you ask them, how are you? They actually tell you how they are. They don't just say, we're fine. They actually tell you all the details of their life. And I find that beautiful about my culture, that there's this honesty, this connection, this, this storytelling concept between all of us. So I believe that it's very cultural of my a bringing of my heritage to tell stories, and that's what I try to present in the book. This is my cover of my book. It represents the two characters in a way because it has a backdrop of destruction, which in a way represents Syria, and the design is meant to show the mental degradation of one of the characters and the physical degradation of the other. 
no war can end the beauty of Damascus. I think that this book is a story that I told because I needed to tell it. But at the same time, I think that a lot of the gay people who are going to read the book need to hear it as well. It's a story that is not just about me, it's about them as well as they welcome queer and lesbian refugees from the Middle East into our culture here in Canada. It's a bridge and bridges are always built from both sides. It's not just a bridge that is built from one side. So I built half of the bridge and I hope that by reading this book you can build the other half towards me. This is Gary Wolfeter for Outlook TV. Now it's time for you to man up. I'm not man enough. No. What's up Canada? Thank you for watching Outlook TV. My name is Leroy Wan and today we're here at the Odyssey in the heart of downtown Vancouver for a very special edition of Man Up. Man Up in its nine year inception of Vancouver has grown from just a drag king showcase to becoming the epicenter of great drag performances and also I would say a haven for many different folks. Tonight it's become a documentary. It's called Stay Gold Man Up. It's been a part of Vancouver Queer Film Festival 2017 and tonight the filming, the screening is for family. I mean Man Up is really a big family and we come together we've gone through the ups and downs and yet we still are a big family and now we're just like expanding and we're growing and people want to learn and people want to be taught. It was kind of surreal seeing the film up on the big screen and hearing people giggling to some parts of it and really enjoying it. Um, it was a really great experience but it also talks about the seriousness of, of what happens in, in nightlife culture and like there is a rape culture involved in, in the bar scene. The body system was created um, by a dear good friend of mine, Pony Boy, and they thought, you know, let's do a harm reduction. Let's do the best that we can to protect our community and protect that anybody who is not wanting uh, advances or people coming on to you and saying, like, you know, we've got a body system. We've got people that will help you. We've got people that will give you water, that will um, stop in case of any interference or things that you don't want. There's no reason to be scared to ever go to Man Up. Man Up is the safest space you could ever be in. I mean, if people can get up on stage, take off their clothes, have a really good time, express themselves, express their gender, express their individuality, there's no stopping you from coming out and doing the exact same thing, or at least appreciating other people do that. The great thing about Man Up is it doesn't fit anywhere, but it also fits everywhere, um, because it's so different, and it's really about throwing the glitter in people's faces and letting them experience a different side of drag and a different side of human experience and gender exploration. It's like grown uh, so much over the years and, and so many people have contributed so many valuable things and it's been this incredible growing like community collaborative like project and capture that and, and, and show it to people who might not necessarily come out at midnight on a Friday every month to see the show in the flesh so yeah. If you have not seen Stay Gold, you need to get right on that. This documentary is so wonderful and so eye-opening to the experience of non-binary performers. From the screening of Man Up, Stay Gold at the Odyssey, my name is Leroy Wynn. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have for this episode of Outlook TV, but we'll be back pretty soon with all new material. And you can contribute to that material if you want to volunteer with us. Reach out to us on any of our social media channels or shoot us an email at Outlook TV. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Rebecca Wyman. And I'm Robert Mackay. Stay fabulous, Canada. Canada.